guys, this is Dimitri's Travel and Tips, and I'm your host, Dimitri. Today, I'm going to give you 10 tips for saving money while traveling. Disclaimer, this video ran way too long, so I broke it up like a celebrity couple. Please enjoy part one, and in a couple of weeks, part two. Now, some of these are going to be for just domestic travel. Uh, and maybe you'll get some that can also help you for international, but here's a little mix, okay? So, the first one, bring snacks. Please bring snacks with you because whether you're on the plane, you're driving, you're just like, you're at home or your, your apartment, wherever you're staying and you're kind of hungry, but not hungry enough to like get a meal. Saving yourself from having to buy those meals, depending on how much you eat, how many people are with you, etc., etc. Um, you know, it can really save you a lot of money. I know it sounds small, but bringing like power bars or granola, some apples, you know, little tiny things like that. Of course, what you bring might be limited by. Um, if you're traveling internationally, like with a plane, maybe they're like, hey, you can't bring that here. So just be aware of that. But if you're domestic, do something like that because it will save you, depending on how long you're traveling, anywhere from 20 to 100 plus dollars if you're going for a long time. So the next thing is cook food. You know, I know you might be tempted to eat at the restaurants all the time for every meal, but you know, it's just not practical. I mean, it's practical in a convenient sense, and if the place you're going to has really, really cheap food compared to where you live. In that sense, uh, yeah, maybe you can go and eat every meal or every time. But typically, if you can even buy food all the time like that, then you can probably get food at the store, the market, even cheaper. And you'll be like, oh my god, how, how cheap is this, you know? Even just replacing one meal a day with cooking food. It doesn't have to be fancy, just some cheap food. Make some pasta, some ramen, um, a salad something like that. Throw some cheese or a sausage in there for some extra whatever, uh, some extra uh, fullness. And you will be surprised. Uh, again, the longer you travel, the longer you do this, the more money you'll save. But I think you'll be really surprised just how much you can save doing this. Okay, three. Try and stay at hostels or at local people's homes um, through services like WorkAway, where you actually spend a little bit of time working, and in exchange, you can actually stay at the person's home. Um, typically, they'll also give you free meals. You know, it's like a room and board situation. Um, now, these things vary in how much work they want, what they'll give you, and you also have to be aware of where the place is. Sometimes it's quite far outside of your zone of travel. Maybe it's very inconvenient or takes a long time to get to from where, um, where you're actually doing all of your stuff. But if you're hopping around to many places and you just work for a day or two, Sometimes it can be as little as two hours, and then you have a free place to stay. You've got free food, usually delicious home-cooked food at that. There's also services like couch surfing, where uh, you don't pay anything. These days, uh, couch surfing has unfortunately become a subscription-based service due to the pandemic, but it's still very cheap. I think it's maybe 10 or $15 for the whole year, so it's very cheap, and I can't really recommend couch surfing enough to people. I went across the entire United States and have done it also in other countries, and it is just an amazing experience. It's not about the money with this service, I'm gonna point that out. It's about um, connecting 
with the people you stay with. It's about sharing your story, sharing your experiences, sharing your skills. Maybe offer to cook them a meal and you uh, get a free place to stay. Maybe make some music for them. If you're a musician, if you're an artist, just draw them a picture. You know, something small like that to say thank you. It doesn't have to be a money-based gift. It can be an experience-based gift. And that's really what more about what the platform is trying to convey. I'm gonna make another video just about couch surfing and just about work away. So look out for those in the future, okay? Number four, plan your route before you travel. So if you're just going to one place and hanging out there the whole time, this isn't really quite so necessary. If it's a big place like New York City, or Seoul, or Tokyo, or something like that, maybe you do need to plan it a little bit because these places are so big. Maybe you can work it where you stay in one local area, walk around so you don't have to taxi or bus so much. Then the next few days or the next week, however long you're staying, go and stay in another part of town and walk around. Um, then go to the next place, etc., etc. Uh, this way you can also get a vibe and a feeling for your local area and kind of splash in the other places as well. You'll be able to walk around, feel more local, more relaxed, don't worry about transportation costs so much. But anyway, this is a much more important thing when you are talking a big uh, national or transnational, a multinational kind of trip. If you can go on Google, uh, you can easily, uh, you can select up to 10 things. If you hit the little plus sign uh, underneath the little where are you going section, you can do this and it'll show you your route and you know, even sometimes when you, it looks on the map initially like it's very close, some places have bad roads. Some places have just one road. So if you're used to a place that's very well connected and has many ways to get someplace, you may be surprised um, in some other countries or other cities or other places where they just have one way to get there. And that way may not be a straight line. It may be you actually have to go all around this huge mountain and up and down a mountain, which can take a lot of time. And if you try and go the wrong way, you could spend hours and depending on the length of your trip, even extra entire days going out of your way, traveling the wrong way, you know? When you can just plan it beforehand, streamline it, save money on gas or on buses, save time, save energy and effort. This is probably one of the number one things I suggest because not planning this will cause you, unless you're lucky, it will cause you an innumerable number of headaches and uh, pain. Uh, so just trust me, do the planning. It might not be fun, but it's very necessary to save money. Number five, learn to haggle and bargain. So depending on where you're from, haggling, bargaining, it may or may not be something that you're used to and that you're experienced in. But if you're not, uh, you should really uh, learn. Sometimes it's uncomfortable, sometimes people will get upset about this, depending on where you go. I recommend searching online to check a country's haggle practices, you know. Some countries, it's very rude to haggle. In other countries, if you don't haggle, people will take advantage of you or just think you're very strange. Thanks for watching guys and stay tuned for part two in a couple weeks. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. See you later guys.